you're in the right place at the right time. Stretching from the distant space ports of Batu, Tatooine, and Anaxis, all the way to the bright center of the galaxy at Imperial Center. Slamming into your hollow projector like a supercharged nanoparticle of coaxium, this is the Star Wars Unfiltered Podcast. I'm John, he's Jason, and we're here to bring you your needed dose of Star Wars film, TV, book, comic, gaming, and collecting news. It is July 11th, 2022, and we are wrapping up our review of the Obi-Wan Kenobi Disney Plus series. Jason, how has your week been? <sighs> well, I mean, it's been like a month. We've delayed this. <laughs> this uh... I think it was like a little over two and a half weeks or maybe three weeks. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm feeling better. I had COVID, so BA5 is uh, a little bit yeah. gnarlier than... Uh, BA2, I think. BA1 and BA2. The beginning yeah. of Omicron. Yeah. I had that in January, but BA5 was pretty rough. And Yeah, it, there's been another surge. It's been going around where, mm-hmm. like, just about everyone I know, like, has gotten it now, except me, apparently, because uh, my roommate, Nicole, had it. Yeah. And my, my uh, homeowners here had it before they le- left on their vacation just mm-hmm. just before they got better right before they left <laughs> make, make and, that clear <laughs> they're not yeah, they're not well, spreading it around right exactly but um it was just weird and then my mom texted me today saying that my stepsister and her her boyfriend got it mm-hmm. at a family gathering that they went to and it's like holy shit dude i can't believe i haven't gotten it yet like i'm literally i'm i'm knocking on this wood desk behind me because every time i say that because I can't believe I haven't gotten it, and I haven't had a booster in over a year. Yeah, it so. it doesn't it doesn't care about that stuff. Like it doesn't. No, it BA doesn't. Five, that... BA five BA five will reinfect anybody. It will infect right. anybody if, no, if you just, give it the it's opportunity. It's just funny. So. It's just funny that all the people that did get boosters and everything keep getting hit by these things, and then me who hasn't had a booster, like I'm just like, oh, I'm okay, yeah. but like. It's just one of those things. Sometimes um, you're lucky. That's all, you know. Sometimes, sometimes it just comes times. down to luck. But anyway, I know. I think. But yeah, we're we're back in full force. So. Ugh. Yeah. And you know, yeah. uh, it. I know I wasn't chomping at the bit to. Review this this episode. So. That was. Yeah, neither was I. Um, <laughs> what... <laughs> Another <laughs> reason so for the delay. Deflated. Yeah, I sound so deflated. Well, you know, it was like. Uh, when the series ended on, I think, June 22nd or so, it was like, it was a big deal. I mean, that last episode actually was really fun, and it was like a culmination. I feel like it was pretty enjoyable compared to earlier in the series. Mm-hmm. Um, but having said that, there's always, with anything Star Wars, any new movie, there's always a period where the glow kind of fades, yes. and then you start you start looking around online the refractory period yeah and you start reflecting on things and then like you might rewatch it like i saw it again shortly after and you know you're like oh maybe that part wasn't as good as i thought and (laughs) it's easy to get um just hyped up by the by the scenes you know and and the revelations or whatever so and also on top of that when I'm not super enthusiastic about a series, whether it's this one or the book of Boba Fett, um, I tend to quickly focus on my other interests like really fast. Mm-hmm. And then as if, if they're non star Wars, like if it's not a star Wars game or book or something, I get pulled out even further. And then my brain is just somewhere else. And then it's easy for me to just, I don't even think about it really. So that's yeah, kind of what I, happened to me. That, that is exactly what happened to me. I, um, you know, I watched the show. June twenty second was actually when I got sick. It was my birthday too. But <laughs> right, basically right. I watched the show happy at midnight. Birthday. Yeah, happy birthday <laughs> to me. Um so uh you know, I was like laid up and stuff, and then when I was starting to feel better after a few days, I was like, Oh yeah, the Stranger Things the season four is out. I should watch that. So I watched that. And then it was As we both did. Yeah. I I re binged the original seasons. And it's funny, I, I talked about that last podcast, how I was kind of poo-pooing him. Mm-hmm. And then as I revisited those first <laughs> few seasons, I was like, you know what? It's better than I remembered. Yeah. So anyway. <laughs> um, and it, it's funny because it was a very nice palate cleanse after Obi-Wan. Oh, it was. It was. But it also just like buried any desire to like <laughs> revisit or dissect Obi-Wan further I than I did. Because I know. It, it, Stranger Things is not a 
perfect series. No, but it knows it's dynamic. It it's knows dynamic. what it is. Yeah, it executes itself very well. The Duffer mm-hmm. Brothers execute it very well, and it hits all the notes that it needs to hit. You know. Yep. Yeah. And um, I think after seeing uh, season four um, and after volume two and everything, um, I think that helped make that assessment for me with Obi Wan. At least yeah. that, that juxtaposition of those two shows and you know let me give you a good example of that uh because i i not that we i don't i want to like bring up other reviewers and everything so i'll just leave them unnamed but i did see some other video reviews of obi-wan online and they they also brought up the contrast with stranger things Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of shots in obi-wan kenobi where there's just characters walking and it's not dynamic. It's just this long shot of a character just kind of slowly yeah. walking. It's, it's probably down and, and, and coincidentally yeah. enough, it's probably the only time the camera's not effing moving in the show. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And there, uh, it's like any other show would would frame something like that a little more differently, or I don't know that they, they would, for example, like Breaking Bad would do these things where the camera would be on like a crane, but it would like spiral out in these like weird dynamic ways to mm-hmm. make you look at the scene differently. And like, there's nothing like that in Obi-Wan Kenobi. And it's just kind of like, it's, it's just there. And I don't know if that was a conscious decision, like, oh, let's film this like a documentary, like this camera's on a tripod just sitting right here. But like, I mean, cause that can be a style, but it's boring. It's like, that's like Lord of the Rings, dude. And don't get me wrong. There's a lot of good shots in Lord of the Rings and I like Lord of the Rings, but it's it's made fun of for the fact that there's just these long shots of characters walking through the woods and yeah. that's kind of how obi-wan felt at times just boring like come on so yeah i mean that's one well criticism. you know what I, I i guess we're in we're we're in the review now we're talking about we, it we are so, spoilers from this point forward. yeah um what uh well i mean i guess we're talking about our overall thoughts and feelings over the over the show or over the, the episode i guess and the show itself yeah yeah this is kind of a wrap-up of everything um how how did you feel about this this final episode what what I, like like i said what things uh, did you like what ago. nitpicks do you have what well, overall i thought this was the best episode of the series like it, mm-hmm. it definitely built up to this culmination the um the duel the final duel with obi-wan and vader was pretty cool overall Mm -hmm. and it was kind of that exciting duel that we wanted not like that obi-wan running away duel like in episode three or whatever yeah oh but like it was awesome the only thing is it felt there was still this like thing of like a low budget feeling like it's like oh it's cool he's using the force to throw rocks and stuff like vader and obi-wan but then the rocks looked like very cg and just not the quality that you know ILM can do and I don't know maybe it was I think you said before we started recording you said this felt like a novel yes you know like like there was these things that like if we had read this in a novel it would be great if, if like it was really an old story. EU or yes, or, or yes. just outside of a movie or show that has brought in the original actors yeah yeah if this was in a so book it just, there would it would be easier to take some of the more fantastical yeah, yeah things that are you know kind of i don't know they don't they don't contradict canon necessarily but they they get really close to scuffing it well one thing that pisses me off that i've seen now i saw on a video review which is completely wrong everyone's not everyone, but a couple of people online are saying, like, it's a contradiction that Leia knows Obi-Wan. No, it's not. That was interpretive in, in the original trilogy. We never knew whether she knew Obi-Wan or not. She just referenced that her father knew. But, yeah. like, she's giving a hologram, and there's a there's a battle going on, and she's got to give this quick message. It's not like she's going to be like, oh, by the way, I remember you, uh, and right. I need you to blah, blah, blah. Like... And, and that's Come what on. I mean. That's what I mean about it getting close to like scuffing canon. Because it's like I, yeah, my knee jerk is to have a huge issue with Leia and Obi Wan and stuff. But um, Lucas though kind of did the same thing with Qui Gon, how he's not referenced in the original right. trilogy. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's not the that same kind of thing. That really. is not really the issue. The issue isn't 
between Leia and Obi Wan. Really, the issue is is with everyone else around that situation, as far as the Inquisitors and Vader in the Empire, mm-hmm. like not making that connection. You know? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and I, I feel like a lot. I f- I feel like with that issue, what really scuffs canon is Obi Wan and Vader dueling. Right? That's. That's yeah. like the that's yeah. probably the biggest issue with canon and how they left it at least in this show. I don't I don't even know if they plan on doing a season two or whatever. I feel like if they like they've already said they're going to do an Andor season two. Yeah, that show's not even yeah. out yet. Yeah, but they don't know if they're doing right. an Obi Wan one. I like though that they are they and they already have a plan on the timeline for Andor. They're saying how not to go off on too much a tangent, but they're already saying how each segment of episodes is going to be one year on season two. Yeah. So it's going to, season one is uh, five years BBY. Oh, season ma- two. Imagine that. They every, have a plan. They have a plan. <laughs> and every three episodes uh, skips ahead another year closer to Rogue One. Mm-hmm. So that's perfect. You know, and that's the thing. Like if they had a season two of Obi-Wan Kenobi, what could they really do? They had their big duel. Like I could see if they had planned two seasons, the cliffhanger of season one could be like they're about to duel and then, you know, season two picks up on that or something. But uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Th- this this whole thing seems like uh, uh, everybody wrote down their ideas of what they wanted to see in like 30 minutes. Yeah, on that on that fucking whiteboard. On the on the on the whiteboard. On the with whiteboard and everything with the di- next to dinosaurs <laughs> and diversity. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and then they wrote it down in thirty minutes, and then the big coup was we got you in. Like, okay, cool. And then everyone wrote down their ideas. All right, uh, well, we have to have them duel. Okay, sure. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Does that go against the original trilogy? Oh, ah, yeah, don't worry about it. Uh huh. You know, it's it's like uh, S- someone well, if if. Like Pablo's supposed to be like the, the lore master or whatever, uh-huh. but he doesn't. I don't know what his opinion is on Obi Wan and the story and stuff, but it's clear probably that, not allowed to have an opinion. It's clear that there is no one in Lucasfilm that one has the authority to uh, to veto things that yeah, would go against canon, yeah. and then also care. That, to care and, about canon, right? And and we already know the answer as to who that person should be if he had the authority. Right. Dave Filoni. Right. Because and, he is the apprentice to Lucas. He is literally the Jedi apprentice. Right. He but, and, intuitively... And even, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like he doesn't... Either he doesn't have or he doesn't feel like he... He, he doesn't have. Yeah. I mean, even though he's pulling up in the ranks at Lucasfilm, you know, and maybe someday, maybe he he, he could be there, <laughs> but like, I think he's the only person that Star Wars fans would trust, because also because of that direct connection to Lucas working with him on Clone Wars and everything. Mm-hmm. So, but anyway, that's he, neither here yeah, nor there. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> I, but yeah, I I actually that's what we need. So, so my point, and I don't want to dwell too much on the the lightsaber duel. Um, yeah, I, I have a lot of problems with it. Um, mm-hmm. With I mean, again, I, I I criticized and then I kind of pulled back on my criticism, but then I'm I'm going to lean pretty heavily into I really don't like the new lightsaber tech that they're doing with the lighting and stuff. It just it looks like a rave glow stick you'd get at a rave, and it glows on everything super yeah. super the not even brightly, but the color looks unnatural when it's on someone's face and everything like yeah you know like when you like on an old crt tv when you'd crank up the color mm-hmm. like and, and like it would you, it would get it would a oversatur- blooming effect yeah it oversaturate and... that's what the blue looks like on my on my tv screen when obi-wan mm-hmm. uses his lightsaber blue is not so. a good light like it, it blue led light is not it's not flattering it's not uh, no. healthy it's not a healthy light and obi-wan looks like a f- freak <laughs> you and looks like, doesn't even look like you and when that blue light. yeah it's just kind of a weird thing and uh, to to tie this to another thing whoever lit these episodes and does the does the color correction and everything it's awful you know like well, they we, can't we've criticized they can't fix with... it because the the lighting is on the set like 
but it's, it's, it's in the volume and it, everything. It, well, and, but I mean, with those lightsabers, they are casting light on the actors. Oh, yeah. So there's, there's yeah. nothing you can do after that. Like, it's Well, it's that's on the film thing. They, they need to go video. back to the old old style and just have it be a stick and then animate it in post. Mm -hmm. You know, forget the forget the light bouncing on things. You can do that for certain scenes, like, a, say, a cave or something, where you, it makes story sense. Well, but you don't need the, the, the reflection on the character's face for right. every single dual Lucas, shot. You know? Lucas did it in Attack of the Clones during the uh, Anakin-Dooku fight. Yeah. But he... It was for that portion of that fight. Yes. Like, it was yes. an artistic choice for that segment, right? Mm -hmm. It was cool then, but it doesn't need to happen all the time. And it's like they're just leaning into it, and they're like, we can do this now. And then they're going to yeah. lean fully into it. And it's like, well, guys, this isn't consistent with how lightsabers work. And again, this and you know, this goes again, back to all the, the technical continuity nitpicks that we have. It's just one yeah. more thing for the pile. And, you know, again, I don't mind experimentation with different Star Wars projects. The, the whole thing is experimentation, going back to the original trilogy, trying a new thing and then, and then refining it as you go on. But this is Obi-Wan Kenobi. This is the return of Ewan. This is the return of Hayden. This is Vader versus Obi-Wan. You cannot get more important than this. This is arguably, story-wise, more important than the sequel trilogy. Arguably. Yes. yeah. And what what we got was a low budget, badly edited, really just like a fan fiction kind of version of these events. And it's like, and again, to to make clear, I enjoyed it, but it's like, at the back of my mind, I just don't feel excited about revisiting this and like watching it over and over and picking up on like new nuances. It's just kind of like, okay, that was cool. <laughs> yeah well like i was gonna say uh well i don't know there, there is a lot with that duel that kind of there's a lot with the duel that has that creates issues and and i know how to fix it maybe you could even edit it to fix it to be honest but um <laughs> yeah the phantom edit <laughs> okay let's let's start from the beginning of the duel vader comes down to the or you know obi-wan lures him to the planet, whatever planet it is. I don't, I don't, Jabim. I it was Jabim again. Oh, they just, they circled back to Jabim. Oh, right. Cause they didn't least, have hyperdrive. Yeah. Yeah. At least that's kind of cool because, like I mentioned a couple episodes ago, that was a key planet for the Clone Wars comics that Anakin and Obi Wan had events happen with the soldiers and everything. Okay. So okay. Wait, wait. I don't like that. Okay. This creates, there's so many issues. Okay. I'm not even going to get to the duel yet. I'm just going to forget <laughs> the duel for now. Let's, let's go okay. over, let's go over the, the sequence of, well, I guess the duel actually happens at the beginning. What the hell? Who's, who's they're, choice Well, is they're that? on the ship and then the ship circles back when Obi, <sighs> okay. by the way, when they're on the ship, that they're so leisurely with, it's like the Star Destroyer is like shooting at him. Like, and it's so leisurely, like we could blow up at any minute, but it's like, oh, let's have this long conversation here. Okay. You know? There's, wait, there's wait, wait, no wait. tenseness okay. to this is a this is a major issue. It's actually the first thing on my list. It's the first thing I noticed when I was watching the the episode. It's the first thing I took a note on. Where and and it's actually an issue prior when they are escaping the fortress the, 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 yeah. Where the fuck are the TIE fighters? Where are the TIE yeah, fighters? Yeah, I know, right? In I didn't Empire even think Empire Strikes of it. Back. In Empire Strikes Back, when they're escaping Hoth. There's four it, they, TIE fighters. They, yes, but there's a reason there's no more TIE fighters, because they're in an asteroid field. It's it's a it's a uh, killing yes. two birds with one stone. One, you create, and... you create a new type of chase, and you explain how they could possibly get away and why there wouldn't be tons of TIE fighters and stuff. Right, right. right. And uh, in the case of the Battle of Hoth, other TIE fighters would be chasing the Rebel fleet and dealing with things off to the side yeah, that we don't but, see. But if you have a super Star Destroyer and others, they're going to have a huge contingent of TIE fighters that can, mm -hmm. that can you know, and, and they're actually trying to disable the Falcon and capture him. So, of course, they would try. It's not like when they're yes. trying to escape the, the Death Star. Okay. Right. So, <laughs> they... There's no TIE fighters, right? The Devastator is chasing the ship. No TIE fighters. Then they circle back to Jabim. When, what, what is the timeline? When did Reva manage to get off the planet and get to Tatooine and, and evade the Devastator? Although, you know, how, how would she get off the planet? I mean, there's presumably no more 
transports on Jabim because that one, uh, that I, other one got. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. They they don't they don't bother to <laughs> I never show. Never thought it. of that because uh, the reason they don't show it is because it would be a big hassle to show, and it would be it would be like they'd have to contort the continuity like so badly. They're just like ah fuck it, she got off somehow. Well, kind of like how she found herself at the end of that tunnel where Leia was in episode three or whatever. I I could buy I could buy like she got off the the devastators chasing um obi-wan and the and the other people uh apparently the tie fighters are in maintenance mode you know under, undergoing maintenance so she could like slip out that way but then yeah. then it's yeah. like okay well how much time is elapsing with all this where she gets she has the I opportunity know. to get all the way to tatooine by the way, I looked on a galactic map to see how close Tatooine was to Jabim. The, the, I actually took the they're time not with my very close. My, they're not close. Not close at don't all. Get, and there's no there's no major wrong. hyperspace lane. Between there's them. no major hyperspace lane. Now, don't get me wrong. Th this happens a lot, even in Revenge of the Sith. Like, how did Anakin get to and from Mustafar? Like, mm -hmm. you know, there's all these things. It's always about secret hyperspace routes. That's the that's the uh, cheap, uh, you know, escape route every time. Right. Which is fine. I can buy that, but again, where did Reva find a ship? Because presumably it was the ship that she came down in with the stormtroopers, and all the stormtroopers are dead, so she could take that ship. That's that's how I would. Explain but you that. would think that even a military pilot would just stay in the ship as the soldiers march out, and then he stays behind so that when clearly whoever I mean, comes back, clearly that's what you think would happen. You know, actually, that, that ties into Vader, too. When when his shuttle landed, I was like, is Vader flying that himself? Because <laughs> <laughs> you, you would think it would be, like, the, the two pilot guys, like, in Return of the Jedi. But, like, I was actually thinking, because you don't see the pilot uh, at all. And uh -huh. I was like, is Vader just flying this himself? And then so Maybe yeah, he, he likes to fly sometimes, fly especially back, back then. Especially back then, he still wants to, you know, to, to fly himself. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> that that's also i don't remember if we had talked about it because it was like well we don't know if she's going to be alive but it's like really vader and the the inquis the grand inquisitor are going to leave her without killing her they're gonna yeah, yeah. he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna stab her in the gut with a lightsaber exactly the same way that the inquisitor uh <laughs> survived and leave her yeah. on the planet and then leave her with a ship and what's going on there's been some good memes where like quagon's all pissed off looking at, at like at his luck at dying from a <laughs> lifesaver in the gut yeah. and then the, everyone else survives but he quagon's got his hands on his hips yeah the, you know? <laughs> yeah no i know because <laughs> like you can't take this seriously anymore it, they cannot do this again no if they do this again in some story oh dude it, it's sorry. it's making it really tough it's fun to it's fun to laugh at it i mean it is know, it is but it, it's just ridiculous and that's why i thought it would have been so cool if he just chopped her effing head off you know <laughs> and that was it for i Eva know and her character arc and stuff but but no it's not and we gotta give her own spinoff yeah Tatooine. okay anyway so okay <laughs> okay fine so they get down to the planet reva has gone to tatooine they uh apparently she's got a hyper secret ship and a secret hyperspace route to get to Tatooine really really fast really oh, fast with the tie fighters the, you also imagine this imagine okay because there was nothing except the starter sort of shooting the transport mm -hmm. imagine like if they did something cool like an easter egg for the hardcore fans what if a bunch of assault gunboats came out oh that'd be great and started shooting ion cannons to just i mean like like, come on, that, do you, they don't you know care. how awesome that would be? Like, seeing them come out and the wings unfold, and they've never been in live action or, like, mm -hmm. hardly seen at all, basically, since, like, TIE Fighter. Yeah. And it's like, dude, do something like that. Don't. Do... But I have to say, the Star Destroyer itself, the model or the CG, whatever they did, it looked gorgeous. Mm -hmm. It looked very reminiscent of how they did in The Empire Strikes Back. They did a great job on the Star Destroyer. I just wish it had gone to other parts of the budget. So um yeah I, I, anyway I, I mean it's just it's just indicative of people not giving a shit you know not thinking, yeah, thinking they're know. like oh well they did this in empire strikes back but they don't think about the details of like why they don't. it was they don't why what was happening in empire was happening the way it was and i i honestly think pablo and other story group people could say say more and put their foot down and and 
actually enhance things like this, just like I said with the assault gunboats. That's kind of the thing that Story Group would do if they had the uh, authority. Mm -hmm. But I get the feeling that their hands are tied by whoever is just writing the script, Mm -hmm. whoever is designated as being the main script person or the main director, whatever. And it's like those people are never hardcore Star Wars fans with a few exceptions. They're always just kind of like this is just a rung. This is just a rung on the ladder to their career. And they're like, well, I like Star Wars. It's like, yeah, Yeah. lots of people like Star Wars. I go to Disneyland and half the people at Disneyland are wearing Star Wars shirts. Everybody likes Star Wars, but they, and they like to consume it. But do they really think about the technical aspects? You know, the, the stupid minutia that we care about that (laughs) Lucas cared about. Oh, especially me. I mean, like, God damn, I, I, I see little Easter eggs for children, the Jedi and stuff. And I freak out that's more exciting to me than the other things on the show. Right. Right. So, and, and the, and the rules of the universe breaking like hyperspace or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, lights, yeah. they, yep. they create issues because you're supposed to, you want to believe it's an escape and you want to believe that this world exists and there are there's an in internal logic. And, yes, there's exactly. An, there's an internal logic. And when that internal logic is pushed to the breaking point or cracked or broken in some cases, it deflates the feeling that it's a real place yes. and you're just kind of like, eh, yeah, okay. Someone doesn't care. Yeah. There's no reverence for it. Right. You have to have reverence to the foundation of star Wars. It doesn't have to be exactly the same, but you need to, it, it's like a framework. You have to stick within you color within the lines. You can't go out of the lines I, I, too much. I don't remember if we mentioned it in the prior podcast, when we were talking about the last episode, but, um, I had run across that article where the writer, I don't remember his name, but the, one of the uh, main writers, some of his name was a J Jeremy or something. Um, There's a lot of writers on the show. There's like three or four. Or oh something. my gosh. Um, yeah. Andrew certain... Stanton, Hossein Amini and Stuart Betty or Beatty. Uh, oh, and, and Joby Harold. Jo- jo- it was Joby Harold. Okay. Yeah. Um, he in an interview God, four writers yeah and it depends on the episode he in a in a interview said when he was doing the treatment or whatever he didn't know if obi-wan would know that vader was anakin or whatever he had to like verify yeah. it or whatever and would he know right, that I he's think alive that's when they went to pablo for that right just watch revenge of the sith <laughs> just watch the fucking movies it's right, right there right like we know right. that obi-wan knows that Anakin is Vader, like that he's referred it's to. It's one as of those Vader. things where they love to uh pay lip service to researching the movies, but then they actually don't. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> anyway, anyway, anyway. Okay. <laughs> we're we're getting off on uh too many tangents. Um it's okay. The whole thing's a f- fuck tangent. Yeah, I know, right? The whole show <laughs> is a tangent. It's a, a contrivance. Um yes. but I mean that's that's an example of like the person that's like in charge or writing it or whatever doesn't really care about the the internal logic of the universe that you're writing in you know yeah and i think that this is an issue with a lot of franchises now and people coming in to these long uh i don't know how to describe it like lord of the rings or star trek or star wars mm-hmm. these these um old franchises that have been around for a long time. They have a lot of uh, stories and uh, structure and internal logic. You know, these universes work in a certain way. And then people come in and they just kind of, you know, ham fist. They put their feet up on the table uh-huh. and fucking knock out over the vase and yeah, yeah, pretty spill much. their drink. Yeah, basically. It's just an example yeah. of it. You know, it's yeah. fucking story group. Yeah, whiteboard and the great dinosaurs. Place you got here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, okay, so she goes to Tatooine. They go down to the planet to duel, okay? The planet's kind of cool. You know, it's got the rock things. It's kind of different or whatever. Yeah. Clearly, yeah. it's... Well, I mean, it's Jabim, right? So It gave me the feeling of, of an... Yeah, a different part of Jabim. It gave me the feeling of um, some old 70s movie or some some old sci-fi painting by having the big rock arches and everything. Mm-hmm. I like that. It did look different. It, like we could see it and be like, okay, that's not Tatooine. You know, it it's at not least didn't look like a rock generic. quarry out in, you know, <laughs> somewhere in SoCal. Yeah. Right? See me Valley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so the duel was 
pretty good. Um, yeah. The duel itself was pretty good. Um, but I had a problem with how it ended. Um, and I feel like a lot of things could be fixed if they just switched around the, uh, the structure of the duel where what we had was Ob or Vader kind of pretty easily ov overpowers Obi-Wan, buries him, walks buries away, him in rocks. Wa you know, he walks away and then Obi-Wan gets out and then manhandles Vader. Um, it was just like Rocky. Like you think he's beaten and then he yeah, bounces yeah. back. It was the classic. And then, and then, you know, they, they lifted the, the shattered mask from rebels. They just yes. had it on the other side this time. Um, yeah. And, and you know what? Um, that was pretty cool. Although it, this is one of those things where most people aren't going to have seen rebels. And so that, that won't even, that's fine. I don't, the, I don't really yeah. have an issue with them lifting it from rebels, but the issue I have yeah. is that clearly it was a thing where they're like, this is really cool. This would be really cool to see. We should do this. Exactly. Not like, <laughs> yes, should yes. we do it? They were so preoccupied yep. with whether they could, they didn't think about whether they should. I know. Um, so I know, Doctor Malcolm. Uh -huh. It's true. So <laughs> they, uh, and then and then Obi Wan walks away. Okay, there are so many issues with how that played out because one. Well, let me point out, Obi Wan with his apology to Anakin was pretty heartbreaking. The look on his face and the emotion and the acting in that mm -hmm. scene was was great. If there was that nothing was... after this show. If, if this was all stream of, you know, the stream of things being made and there wasn't a four, five, and six yet, this would be, yeah. this would be fine. This would not have an issue. Yes. But, okay, the whole rock thing with Obi-Wan, why? That was a bit much. Why? That was, that, they didn't that was do like this. Ray. They didn't do this on Mustafar. And presumably you could think, well, okay, this is not, when Vader does it to um, Luke, he's doing it to f with him right because Luke's yes. a novice you know he's he's yes. half trained and stuff he doesn't have the it's sort of like you know a a a fully trained competent jedi master can he he can counter uh sith lightning right he knows how to do it um, yeah but luke doesn't he gets manhandled same thing with uh, vader throwing the uh um stuff at, at luke yeah. But, yeah. And I guess you could say, well, you know, Vader was kind of disabled or whatever at the point when Obi-Wan was throwing the rocks at him or, or whatever. But that's the way my head can. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it. it's fine. But if, if they would switch everything around, it, the, the, the duel would work better. So what they should have done is have the, the second half of the duel happen first, where it's, a, it's very intense. Uh, Obi-Wan, you know, breaks. Uh, Vader's mass disables his his stuff. The rock thing, it's all fine. But then, then it should have been Vader using his rage at Obi Wan to collapse the rocks on Obi Wan to collapse the rocks on Obi Wan to and then to get the walks upper hand. away and thinking then Obi Wan is dead. Exactly, exactly. Uh, Just yeah. switch it around. It makes way more sense that way. It actually now, does <clears throat> with the way they left it. Why aren't they shaking the the organas down? To find Obi Wan, right? Who can, yeah, even if he's dude, a senator? The whole, because the whole thing. Because he, okay, I was even thinking how Obi Wan at the end uh, when he says his goodbye to Leia and Bail and everything, he mm -hmm. lands on this platform in the middle of Aldera City or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, the Empire has spies mm -hmm. somewhere in that city. Mm -hmm. Oh, they just happen to see this. Obi Wan land on an open air platform, like for everybody to see. Yeah. All it takes the, is one fifth... guy with a macro binocular on a building to zoom in and yeah. be like, "Hey, wait a second. Yeah, flee, flees back. He's he's scoping <laughs> him out. You know, fifth yeah, brother exactly. should jump out and you know start dueling Obi Wan. Right. And you know what? Hey, if every if Reva survived and the Grand Inquisitor survived, I'm gonna think that Flea is still out there. Yeah, he's, he's clearly, ready. He's just. He's, <laughs> he's at a detox facility. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Clean anyway, base. if 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 they just did that, if they switched it around with the duel and had yeah, it where that would have been cool. Then, then it's great because you still had your your cool moment with Obi Wan. Vader didn't job, you know, he still beat Obi Wan because Yeah. Look, here's the other issue. Obi Wan is gonna pussy out again 
and not kill Vader again. And then, and then later on, he's going to tell Luke, oh, you have to kill him. It's like, <laughs> I, I had I two opportunities to do this, but you are the one that has to do it. He looks like even more of a piece of shit asshole for trying to get <laughs> Luke know. to kill his own dad because he couldn't do it. Yeah, yeah. It pisses yeah. me off. Stuff like that pisses me <laughs> off because the writers just don't think about it. They, they don't think about it. And the thing is, obviously, I didn't think about it until you brought it up because it just didn't cross my mind. But these are writers that sit around for weeks in, in, in uh, brainstorming sessions. They're getting paid to bounce, do this. Getting paid, bouncing ideas back and forth, spitballing, like, months or even a year before, like, filming begins. Like, story group and, and the writers would be, like, in the, doing this stuff. Mm -hmm. And it just amazes me that something like this didn't cross their path. I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong. We, no, not everybody can think of every story idea, but, but I mean, come on with what we got. It's so flawed. It's yeah. so flawed. Yeah. And, that, and that's why at the end of the day though, I can't dwell on it. And my only coping mechanism is to just be like, to throw up my hands and be like, <laughs> well, that's that. That's, that's it all. Is it is what it is. That's what it is. And and we can either sit here for months on end and pound away at it in forums and on Facebook comment sessions, which some of us out there will do, as we, we, we know well, or we can just be like, ah, fuck it, and go on to the next thing. Obviously, that's kind of what you and I did. Oh, Stranger Things. All right, cool. Uh -huh. But, like, dude, to, again, what this could have been, what it should have been. I uh, I think I said when it ended it was like 3.5 out of five stars for me. Mm -hmm. I think the glow was adding that extra point. Mm -hmm. I think this is three out of five now about on par with the book of Boba Fett, because that, that series also had some cool moments that were super awesome, mm -hmm. but was also very flawed. But yeah. again, what, what makes this more important though, to be critical of it is that you had you in, Mm -hmm. And again, Ewan did a great job. He himself, with what he had, he did fine. His acting was amazing, and it was just mm -hmm. fun. And I'm glad he didn't all that. That was the thing I walk away from, just being thankful for that. But again, what could have, what should have been. Like, at least give him more of a budget. And you know what? Let me bring up Natalie Holt again and her wallpaper score. Mm, I'm, because... I'm glad you're bringing this up because I, I, we talked about a little yeah. interview. Yeah. Yeah. And again, everybody I knew, me, you, other friends, other people on, on social media, everyone was saying how just standard the score was. There was nothing that stood out. There was so many moments you could have heard more themes, more amazing like callbacks to the original trilogy. And you know what's funny? In looking at the track listing, and I bear in mind I've not sat down and listened to it yet on Spotify where it's streaming. But looking at it, there is uh, some of the tracks are composed by William Ross, mm -hmm. who is another composer that has worked with John Williams uh, at length. And actually, he conducted the Obi-Wan theme. So John Williams wrote it, but mm -hmm. William Ross conducted that in credit theme and yeah. everything. So, but in looking at the soundtrack, William Ross has about four or five credits that are just his. And looking at the titles, of these i think those are the times we heard one of the themes come back like yeah. vader's imperial march when he's sitting in the throne talking to the emperor pretty sure that was william ross so all the good parts are probably william ross well and all the rest all the filler is natalie holt in I think. natalie's defense she there was an interview with her and she, uh, she talked about you know the soundtrack and um it, it was an interview where she talked about low key because she did the low key soundtrack um and then also star wars yeah and in the interview she said um they didn't know this is what she said they didn't know if they were going to be able to use john williams music which what the hell are you talking about like it's not like john williams owns the star wars music like, yeah. I don't know if it's, it's like it's maybe, owned by Lucasfilm and Disney. Yeah, I, I've heard, I've heard, you know, S Star Wars stuff's crammed in everywhere. I'm pretty sure you could use it in a Kenobi show. So I don't know what she's talking about. I don't know if yeah, I don't know if it's like something where like they they still ask John 
Williams if they could use certain things. But I, I don't know. Whatever. I don't know what the hell she's I understand about. having reverence to where you don't want to – you want to create your own material. I totally get that. As, uh, as someone who understands creativity, you don't want to just piggyback on, on just the original themes. I get that. But I mean, come on, it's Star Wars. Yeah, we you just need weave them stuff in to and out. hold the fabric together. Right. They they did it's a good a, job of in Solo. They you know there was the they used some some uh, some of the music from A New Hope. Really some well. of Solo was the exact note for note. Other scenes like the asteroid field from the Empire Strikes Back, and then um, the uh, flight from uh, Mos Eisley when the Falcon's taking yeah. off. Those were like lifted, but it would be like a uh, thirty seconds or a minute. At yeah, a time. it was just it enough to like, like weave it in, but not like have you know it replace like a whole section yeah. of music or whatever. It's fine, and it, and but, I was fine with it. I th I could see why some people might be critical of that, but when I saw Solo, it gave me that tingly feeling. Yeah, in those scenes, I was like, oh yes, yeah. um, we but, need that. So in in Natalie's defense, she she mentioned you know. Deborah didn't know or something. Deborah Chow didn't know if they were going to be able to use the music. And then Deborah wanted something that was, you know, more mellow or muted or something or all or mostly original. I don't know. I, it's the same thing with the, the sequels. I was not blown away by the music in the sequels. And that was written and conducted John by Williams. John Williams. <laughs> so I, I really place the blame on whoever's like instructing and sort of uh, pushing the the composer, whoever it is, John Effing Williams or Natalie Holt. My blame is because they're women. No, just kidding. Well, um, did, uh, did, did John Williams <laughs> transition while I wasn't paying attention? <laughs> <laughs> no, just the Obi Wan, uh, just uh, Natalie. No, no, she, um, no, she's no, fine. So, John uh, Williams is old. John Williams is old, so he gets a pass because when he, he he composed the Last Jedi, he would have been eighty four, eighty five, or something. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It, it's fine. And he's I done a still, million scores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I, it's fine. I'm, I'm I'm giving I'm giving them a pass because I place the blame on the the filmmaker, not pushing JJ them to do either JJ or Ryan or Deborah Chow Deborah, or whatever. Yeah, they're not pushing yeah. for certain things, so. It's fine. The music I felt was pretty lacking. I, I listened to about half of the soundtrack so far on Spotify. It's okay. It's serviceable. It's not bad. It's just, it's missing it's just certain there. stuff. <laughs> it's fine. That's kind of what a soundtrack needs to be sometimes. But with Star Wars, there are a lot of, there's a lot to pull from with existing tracks, the force track yeah. and character themes and stuff and different action themes and stuff. And you can weave that mm -hmm. in and out. And I feel like that's not really Natalie making that decision because they didn't you know, really do that until the sixth episode. Um, Base in point. Let me give you an example of how to do Star Wars music while bringing back callbacks, but still being original. Uh, uh, the guy that does uh, the Bad Batch and Clone Wars, um, Kevin Kiner, I think it is, mm -hmm. how he brought back the old Stormtrooper Imperial theme from A New Hope yeah. when they were in that Imperial base on the Bad Batch. And of course, we got those goosebumps because he used it sparingly. But when it was used, you know it as a fan, and you're like, "Oh, cool!" Because no one ever uses that theme. So, ex sh just as an example, yeah, all these scenes on Dayu with stormtroopers, what, that'd be awesome. Just to use the old Imperial theme, yeah. you know, like yeah. it doesn't have to be the Imperial March twenty four seven because then that would lose its flavor, also. Yeah, but like, but I, I definitely, know, I give, I give Natalie the benefit of the doubt. I. After the sequel trilogy, I will blame the filmmaker before <laughs> before the, the composer because yeah. they're just doing what they're instructed to do. It's the same sure. with like visual effects. You know, they're only doing what they're instructed to do by the filmmaker. And what they have a budget to and do. And what they have a budget to do. You know, it's not the 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 guys at LM, ILM aren't deciding on yeah, you know, how things are working out in in a you know, yeah. like in a shot. They're just they do what they're told. So um, Right, right. Uh, it's just this this it's because this deserved more yeah, that's why we're yeah. pissed this, yep, it's this true. should have been like an amazing pinnacle of disney plus now now so. okay so the duel okay we chop it off there sure they, they could have fixed it they could still fix it they just jump just switch it around because look vader oh yeah that's where i left off uh you know obi-wan's a piece of shit for you know, yeah. having the opportunity to kill Vader, he doesn't. Cause you, Ooh, you're my best friend. Oh, I'll just get yeah. your kid to do it. You know? Yeah, yeah. Fuck. I mean, <laughs> if if Obi Wan 
if Obi-Wan could take Vader down by himself, then, and they know, and then uh, presumably they didn't know he was still alive, but I don't know how that would happen. But um, then why does he like, hey, Yoda, let's go take him out. Let's pick him off and then we can, you know, do whatever. Then we'll train Luke and then and Leia and pick off. Yeah. The I don't know. Whatever. Ugh, it's so frustrating. Um, <laughs> okay. So Reva's on Tatooine. She got there really quick. Really fast. Hunting down Luke. Dying breath. Yeah. Hunting down Luke and Owen and Baru. And this is what I wanted to see. This is what I wanted to see six episodes of. Not the Leia show. Not, I mean, it's Obi Wan show, but um, the Leia was <laughs> virtually a co-star for the entire thing. Eh, you know, sometimes, which is fine. But, but what but... I wanted to see was way more Owen and Baru. Yeah, at least, yeah, and Luke and stuff, well, and that's you know. season two. So, <laughs> um, I, I thought it was really cool watching Owen and Baru protect Luke and fight. Yeah, uh, I, they off. really made Baru Annie Oakley. Like uh-huh, yeah. she she's the one throwing Owen the blaster. Right. Like right. he's like blubbering while he she's you know, which is you could say is another like woke kind of thing. Like the woman's the one in charge and here here you go, Owen, like we gotta blast. Yeah, but but this, then this. but then you know what they do? Owen grabs her right by the pussy. He he grabbed Reva. <laughs> yeah. It looked like it. It didn't. He didn't it do it. Like it. it did, he, yeah. he didn't do it. But it was so dark in that scene. At first, I was like, "What did he just grab?" When he grabbed I, I thought wound. that too for half a second. Yeah. Um, I know. I he, it's he also Trump funny how. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he needs the hat. Uh, it, it's funny. Also, it makes you wonder how much Luke saw as far as Reva's lightsaber or anything, because. I think uh-huh. he starts climbing up right when she comes into the garage, yeah. right after the fight with Owen on the walk, the causeway kind of thing. Yeah, and um, it makes you wonder. And I, I, I'm at least thankful that they kept that ambiguous, to where we, we, we as an audience can wonder what Luke saw and what he thinks and what he knows, like say of lightsabers or Jedi. Obviously, he's never seen a lightsaber until he is given his father's, but it just makes you wonder and. I, I think it's a missed opportunity that we didn't see more of Luke this whole series until the very end. And even then it was just kind of fleeting, but you there know, should have been uh, more interactions between Obi-Wan and Owen. There should have been more, yeah. uh, you know, tension I thought it was and, going that route at the very beginning because, Oh, hell, you know, they were, we thought, they were setting that up. We thought Leia was going to be like a one or two episode little excursion. I know. And, I know. And he was going to drop her off and then go take care of Luke. You know, Luke's going to get in trouble or whatever. But uh uh-uh. no, it was but no. It was all Leia <laughs> all the time. Um, yeah. So I really like that scene. It does get kind of weird with the lightsaber thing because it's like, eh, you're, you're really, you're, you're kind of. You're kind of messing with stuff. You're kind of getting close to scuffing continuity. It is. Like... It is strange now to think that when I wa- and I still haven't seen a New Hope now in the context of everything. I'm actually hoping to watch it like maybe this week again to kind of see how it, in my mind how it all connects. But it is interesting to think now that Garage has seen not only Luke's <laughs> mother and father talking in it uh-huh. and Anakin having a breakdown about. Tuscans, uh-huh. but now there's been a inquisitor with a lightsaber right there and that garage has uh has seen some things <laughs> Kleeg probably banged <laughs> me in there at some point he probably and, did and owen and baru at some point <laughs> probably so that, probably so those... maybe that oil bath is used for <laughs> not just droids <laughs> that's why that's why uh c-3po came out with a boner in the uh, tops card or whatever it was <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> if these walls could talk, if uh, this yeah. if this spa <laughs> yeah. could talk. <laughs> yeah, good times. Um, uh, but and then it's funny that Luke ran out into the canyon. <laughs> so again, that uh, canyon's wonder, right I, there, man. It's right there. It, well, I guess that's just canon now. Like that's it's fine. Uh, it's, you know, I did that. Well, I can't remember how did I leave it because I watched. Oh all yeah, yeah we we talked about it at length. Yeah, it was yeah. like the first episode, I think. It, it has Actually, it to might have, even been the trailer. It has I to can't. be like right there. It's just always either it was the shot behind is the from, sand crawler. Yeah, it was I behind guess. the sand crawler. That's just the way. Of course, what screwed it up, like you said on the episode, was the Rise of Skywalker. Yes, that's right. Shot. That's yes. what screwed it up. Yep, JJ, 
fucking things up left and right. So that 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 canyon was plowed apparently. <laughs> like <Yeah. laughs> in the thirty years since. Yeah, whoever took over the the Lars farm. Yeah. Plowed yeah. It over. Yeah, just shoot um, a big super laser here. Take out this canyon. Yeah, so so Riva really ineptly tries to take out Luke and um kind of knocks him with the force, I guess, off the little not really a cliff, but it's just like a little uh I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what she, I mean, it's like 10 feet up. I don't and know. You kinda, and then kind of slid down. And and then she lives. And then Reva lives. And then she lives and she Oh, it's okay. Has a breakdown with Obi Wan and I mean, again, with her character having this arc of that she's playing the long game, trying to defeat Vader from within as a way of survival, really. Self self survival, um, because she was captured by the Empire. I mean, I, I still don't quite know what to make of this. Like well, we we will find out on Disney Plus on the Riva show. We, 20, we will know. Twenty three. We will yeah. see all of it. I guess we will. In a rematch I duel with um, Vader, where he again yeah. doesn't chop her effing head off. Yeah, you know, again, having seen it now, and we can we can properly criticize everything, including Riva's character. Um, I I still feel like there's not really a charm to the character. Like, I don't I don't have any like sense of like oh I want to learn more about her. To me, it's just she's just kind of it was just a former Padawan and it was you know had a thing and then it's just like you know like with Boba Fett and maybe it was the mask I don't know. There's other characters where it's you always like oh I want to learn more about them. Darth Maul, a good example. Like. Mm-hmm who the hell is this guy and he's killed so quick and it makes you really want to learn about how he became a sith well because she didn't and, die right you know, and we know everything maybe, there is to know about her I, I yeah i guess i guess i feel like there's just not enough questions or something i mean unless it's possible i mean maybe this is a long shot but maybe this is going to tie into grogu or something at the temple I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. That's I don't kind care. of a long shot. I just don't care. <laughs> I, I'm like, I, I'm care. Tommy Lee Jones. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. And the fugitive. Um, yeah. And, and then she, you know, she she goes away, I guess. She flies off in her Sith Inquisitor <laughs> ship and yeah. Fs off mm. to uh, parts unknown. Maybe she'll uh, she'll hook up with uh, Corrin Horn and they'll <laughs> right. have adventures together you know, or something. Did don't in the last shot though? Don't we just see her kneeling with Obi Wan? Like we don't actually see her fly off, right? right She's right. just there. It would be interesting if she does settle on Tatooine and then kind of goes off and does the hermit thing like Obi Wan. But that would it be makes weird. you wonder, like, is that setting? Are they gonna? Is that where Obi Wan gets his little hut? Like he goes and lives with Riva, and then they, then she dies later why or something. Why is Obi Wan obsessed with? Not well. I, I, I actually, I, I know why. It's fine, I guess. But Obi Wan's obsessed with um, having other people kill Vader. You know, <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'm gonna bring him to you, and you kill him. <laughs> oh, I can't kill yeah, you, Vader. I gotta get your son to do it. Uh, yeah, he doesn't want the responsibility. <laughs> yeah, which I, you know, I kind of get. But when yeah. the stakes are, you know, the stakes are so incredibly high. Um, for the galaxy, for the whole galaxy, and, and you know, <laughs> the Jedi and everything, it's like you just do it. I mean, yeah, he's your best friend, yeah, and your brother, and stuff. I know. But you just do it. Qui Gon would do it. You know, it. I was thinking again because um, it came up in my Facebook memories. But I was uh, there was a Clone Wars episode, the uh, Darkness on on Umbara arc, and I was remembering again how much that that arc of episodes affected me emotionally. Like it was only three episodes, maybe four. But it was such a punch in the gut both times I saw it across a few years. And I was thinking, like, gosh, that hit me 10 times harder than anything I've seen on Obi-Wan Kenobi or the Book of Boba Fett. And that's just like, what the hell, dude? That's an animated series largely aimed at kids, mm-hmm. you know? Like, geez. <laughs> and 
I mean, there was even things in Rebels that were pretty emotional, like you know when Kanan uh, died and things like that. But I don't know, man. Well, like you know the the, the part yeah. you know the part between Obi Wan and, and Anakin or Vader when his mask is busted and you know yeah they're that was to good. Each other. That's it's it's pretty good. It's just it doesn't that, that was effective. It just doesn't belong. <laughs> That, that, well, that's the thing too, is that it was a relatively short scene. You you get that emotion for like a minute, and then it's on to other things. Like even the uh, sequel trilogy has had. There's parts of that that really affect me, like when uh, Kylo Ren is talking to Han on the gantry mm -hmm. before he kills him. Yeah, that scene really hits me in the gut every time. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's just, I don't know, man. Uh, they need to. <sighs> I kept thinking that because we had this like two year break with COVID and then the end of Rise of Skywalker, we all got the feeling that Disney was like cleaning house and they were, that they were reconfiguring how they were going to approach Star Wars, which they kind of have. But I got the sense that when it came back with like, um, well, I guess the Mandalorian a couple, like last year or whatever, but like I got the feeling that it was going to be fresh and like back to big dynamic emotional high quality like maybe not like classic trilogy days obviously but like you know just something solid and instead i just kind of feel like they're treading water it's just kind of the same if anything it's going down in quality like I I think the it's, sequel it's, trilogy is still better than the, than Obi Wan Kenobi and Book of Boba Fett. Budget and, budget wise, yeah. I mean, the, with the it, the production value and stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's not obviously there's still major that, issues with that stuff. But it, yeah, they're, they're in. Um, they they need to recoup the investment, right? Because they paid yeah. four billion or whatever. Um, yeah. yeah, they're still recouping that, and right now Star Wars is something that can drive disney plus subscriptions that's all it is yeah because because yeah. they um this is a kind of a tangent but you know recently with uh thor love and thunder coming out um they there's been a lot of interviews with uh uh what's his face the director i can never pronounce his name um is it it's not it's not take a white white tt is it yeah yeah he's got he's supposed oh, he, to he did direct love and thunder yeah he did ragnarok and love uh thor love and thunder yeah, ragnarok I, got I, knew him. He did, I knew he did ragnarok yeah. i just didn't know he did the new one i thought he was so busy working on his star wars movie no that's that's the funny thing on. you know ragnarok got his foot in the door at lucasfilm to do a star wars movie because you know kathleen loves to pick up whoever the hottest director is and then <laughs> yeah the subsequently fire or bury whatever they were doing you know <laughs> right right the tale is old as time um yes and then you know with love and thunder coming coming out there's been a lot of interviews with him and there's you know um he's a little insufferable with his humor because there's yeah he there was some interview and he i can't tell if he was being serious or if he was joking in this story where i noticed that he, in the disney gallery mandalorian one where he's at the round table and it, also it's the the clothes he wears he wears like the super bright colored suits that's and fine, things whatever. And, like well eh, he he, right. he you know he's got the star wars movie supposedly he's working on and he yeah. uh he asked natalie portman hey you want to be in a star wars movie you know and she's like well <laughs> i've been in three star wars movies but like he tells that story and it's like are i hope you're joking because if you don't <laughs> yeah. know that then there's going to be problems you know if you're not up on yeah so i think he's just joking but it, it just gets it's a little much and you know it's weird humor that yeah. i don't get if he is joking <laughs> and from from the reviews and stuff of love of thunder the the humor is just kind of corny and kind of overly done which you know is a whole issue with oh, marvel like, and, a marvel movie with overdone humor yeah. no way yeah <laughs> I, hell star wars at this point they're borrowing all the quips and the uh undercutting emotional moments with jokes all the time so i know anyway um he uh in an interview they asked him like oh you know what's what's going on with your star wars movie and they don't have a, a script or story yet it's like what are you doing your your stuff was supposed Dude, to come, it's supposed to come out like next year or whatever I that think, was like announced that was announced i believe in 2021 or maybe 20 it was at least yeah. a year or two ago that I think it was, it was 
I think it was supposed to come out before Rogue Squadron or whatever. At least initially, it was. It was. It was around that time period. I well, I think Rogue Squadron was always announced as being the next one, but it was going to be like shortly after that or around it. Now, it, it, same thing with Obi Wan Kenobi. Like, I thought this had all been nailed down like three years ago because they announced Ewan. Mm -hmm. I think in 2019 mm -hmm. as returning, and Obi Wan was a thing. And then we got it like nearly three years later. That's a long time. Now, again, I know COVID, all that, sure. But that also gives people more time to write shit. <laughs> so yeah. it's not like COVID is locking down everyone's arms from lifting a pen or something. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's just another example. I don't think that movie's going to come out. I don't think he's going to have a. Especially, you might be right. especially if Love and Thunder doesn't hit the mark. It's, yeah. it's just not going to happen because, you know, Ryan Johnson's trilogy, um, D&D, the <laughs> Game of Thrones guys were supposed to have a trilogy. Uh, yeah. Uh, was it Miller and Lord with uh, yeah. Solo? Yeah. Uh, Josh Trank was supposed to do the Boba Fett movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, what's her Colin face? Colin Trevorrow. Uh, Colin Trevorrow uh, scooted it out on episode nine. Um, this is a recurring thing. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh what's her face wonder woman uh director with Rogue yeah Squad uh, patty jenkins patty jenkins yeah. i mean that delayed, i think has the delayed. biggest shot of coming out but after yeah. wonder woman 1984 and everything uh -huh. that might not even happen because yeah. they probably haven't started pre-production or anything they're probably just still working on a script uh, that's my feeling at this point uh taika's movie i don't think yeah there's i don't i don't know that that's gonna happen I, I feel like everything as far as movies is just this big question mark of of maybe. And I well, feel like because Disney Plus now is this, probably what they're, you know. They keep, they keep doing this stuff where, oh, we got this hot director or this hot filmmaker and he's going to make a Star Wars movie. And then it, and then it turns into reshoots, new oh, directors, new writers. Also, Donald Glover, movie. Donald Glover, how Kathleen Kennedy... I don't think it was in Vanity Fair, but it was an interview shortly after that. She said, Lando is still happening. We're just waiting for Donald's schedule to open up. And it's like, dude, he's not only does he act, but he's a musician, rapper, you know, as Childish Bambino. He's, it's he's BS. like the hot thing. So, like, his schedule might not ever open up. It's BS. You know? they, they're still, whoever's writing it or making it is, you know, if they've even figured that out, they need to write or. You know they need to write the stories and stuff. There's there's some other holdup. It's all BS. What what happened to um, Gareth Edwards? Right? They yeah. they came in and did reshoots on Rogue Rogue One. You know yeah. they even messed yeah. with with his stuff. He he fortunately still got his name on the effing thing. You know <laughs> yeah. But that was changed. And it heavily. turned out it turned out being arguably the best of the Disney era. Right. And it may have been better with the original his original you know vision or whatever. It Who could knows? have been. But. But at least it came. It, and of course, this is what gives us hope for Andor is that by virtue of it not dealing with any prior character or storyline or anything, it can. Other than Mon Mothma. Yeah, but that's fine. But that's minor. It's minor. She's, it's she, not... she's an open slate. She's an open slate. Right. We don't know much about her yeah, specific it, story other than her. The fact that know. it's just dealing with minor characters, no mainline character no mainline story thread it has the freedom to just do yeah. what it needs to do exist as itself and be original and fun and star wars it's not and that's all i want i don't want these i'm so tired of stories that have to tie into the big character arcs and the big because they, they fuck it the up time. they fuck it up they, every they, time but generally they fuck it up although I'm well, just kind of tired of it. I just want to see. I want to see the grunts. Yeah, you know. Yeah, like new well, characters and grunts. That was Come that on, was something. Big galaxy. That was something that struck me after Obi Wan was, especially Episode Six. It was it was all the things we wanted to see throughout the whole series. Just at the end, it was kind of. Uh, I made mention of it before the podcast when we were talking. Where it's kind of the the Revenge of the Sith of the. Obi Wan series, where like all yeah. the stuff we wanted to see was in that the one. checklist. It was the checklist, yeah. you know, Qui Gon and Owen and Beru yeah. and the Emperor. Oh, we didn't even and... talk about Qui Gon. Yeah, yet. no. What? Where, 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 
<laughs> what what is it. there to say? He's there. Yeah, he's it, there. He's not supposed he to. Kind of, he's not supposed to have an apparition at this point. He's still supposed to looks, just be a disembodied voice. Right. He looks kind of weird, probably just because Liam Neeson's a bit older. He doesn't look awful. He he's just got. Looks he's got full blown space aids. Just like that, <laughs> yeah. that uh, bit from that uh, Warwick Davis show. Warwick Davis show, yeah. He's, um, he's riddled with it. Um. <laughs> it, it was. I, I was at least happy to see that at the yeah, end. But, but, it, but that's it was, what I wanted. I wanted more of that. It, it was just. I know. It was just kind of there, and that actually that is a perfect example of what I was going to say. Is they the show gave us the bare minimum of what we wanted to see. Leading Hello to there. the last, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then, and then they crammed all the fan service at the end, yeah, right, with the yep. emperor and stuff. Which the we should have seen way more of that, you know. And and, and I, th then, I thought there was going to be. I know, more. I know. But, and uh, yeah, Vader's throne room looks like shit. It looks like dude. It, it looks like a level of dark sitting. forces. Yeah. <laughs> The textures yeah, on the walls just looks like it's out of Dark Forces. Yes, yes. Um, I guess that's well, I mean, okay. Yeah, <laughs> actually, uh, now that I think about it, that's it actually good. But it's um, it's the marble. It's it's kind of yeah. like in Solo when they just like jammed in Maul at the end. Yeah, and then you're yeah. like you're like ooh, and then it's like great. <laughs> what happens next? Oh, nothing. <laughs> nothing. Nothing happens next. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. It's it's also, similar. It's different, but it's it's a little similar because like also what what happened too with Maul. It would have been interesting if we saw that in Solo with Maul, and then Rebels picked up those threads and continued it. But because Rebels happened first, and we saw the end of that story first, and then Maul going back five years earlier, it deflated the whole thing. You, you know, it, like it, it's pretty uh, it's pretty obvious what they were doing. They were just going for like a Marvel, you know post-credit yes. type teaser yeah. for like what's yeah. next or whatever but there is no yeah. next okay and yes it works for marvel because all they're doing is they're taking ex existing like an old continuity and existing uh continuity and plucking things plucking characters plucking stories from it that yeah work and then using that those elements to make new things it's it's yeah. just it's it's not adapting uh strictly adapting existing stories and characters but they're plucking things and but they're not doing that with Star Wars they're just well they are they are doing they're they're plucking from the expanded universe well they're kind of, they're doing it more and more but but they're not executing yeah. it and that's a that's a good yeah. example of like it's like oh well, there's Maul but that's I know what the okay and it's like with, it's oh. it's similar with um Qui-Gon except it is different because it's like oh there's Qui-Gon Great. Wish I would have seen him three episodes ago, or he was yeah. an ongoing character, yeah. and it's like, uh, okay. Yeah, because also, I how I often do you two? get? I don't know. How often do you get Liam Neeson? You know, it's like take no, advantage know. of it, and and that's why also people were saying if if Hayden is in this, he should be in the Vader suit ninety percent of the time. People were still saying that a lot of the fighting shots are stunt guys, which is I'm fine with. Because they, they might be bigger and bulkier to fill it out for a stunt scene. Yeah. But um yeah, it's just one of those things. Yeah. You know. Um so I don't know. I mean we could we could pontificate on all the issues and and beat the dead horse forever. But I guess we'll wrap this up. Yeah. I, I, I guess in closing, what I'd like to say is, at least with episode six, I wanted more of what I saw in episode six across the whole show, basically. And as it stands, the whole show, I didn't. Eh, eh, that, that's yeah. Okay, that's yeah. it. Eh, there <laughs> yep, you go. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'll rewatch it again, maybe later this year, maybe next year. But overall, it's just eh, 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 yeah. Eh, eh. <laughs> and on that <laughs> note, uh, we hope everyone enjoyed this episode. Um, remember, you can look for us at Star Wars Unfiltered on YouTube. We are on Facebook. And we are on Instagram. And if you have any questions or comments, make sure to send them to StarWarsUnfiltered at Yahoo.com. And uh, until then, uh, everyone, may, may the Force be with you. Good night. What do you call two sons fighting each other? What? Star Wars. <sighs>
That's awful. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs>